Next, we have gathering data, and I'm going to cover sources of data, so primary and secondary, data reliability, questionnaires, focus groups, and interviews. So first and foremost, we have sources of data, and the two main sources are going to be primary and secondary. So even though this is IT, this is something that's synonymous amongst, uh, I would say, all subjects, we have primary data and secondary. Primary sources provide first-hand account of an event. So think of primary as going directly to the source. So imagine you wanted to talk to, I don't know, Boris Johnson, right? Rather than speaking to his aides or his, um, his assistants, you would go directly to him and ask him questions about his experiences. Where secondary sources involve analysis, synthesis, interpretation, or evaluation of primary sources. So this would be someone else sitting down and saying, hmm, I think this about person A. I have observed this about person A. So primary sources, again, you going directly to the person. Secondary sources, you're assessing what the person has said or done, but it is not their actual account of the event. So secondary is going to be data that already exists and we're going to analyze that data we're going to interpret that data next we have data reliability and for data to be reliable as you can see here it says data must be complete and it must be accurate so being accurate i think that's quite obvious the data must be correct if this is what we've asked for this is what we should get uh, for things to be more accurate, it's always a good idea to go to the source. So in this case, again, going to a primary source might be more beneficial than going to a secondary source because you want the data to be more true to, for it to be more accurate. And for data to be complete, it must have all the relevant pieces for it to make sense. For example, you own a shop and you've been tracking sales from January to December. You not having February, February and March would mean that the data is not complete because ideally for you to make a decision about next year, let's link this back to something as well. So for you to have an EPOS system, so that's an electronic point of sale system that, that um, is an automated stock control system, it needs to have data on every month to see what sales we had last, what did I say, February and March, so that next year in February and March, we can predict based on what's happened already, how many or how much ice cream we're going to sell in February and March, or how many pairs of socks we're going to sell in February and March. Those are examples of why data needs to be complete, because we need to make decisions based on the data we have. And if the data we have doesn't have, or is not comprehensive enough for us to make a decision, we're going to make bad decisions. So under collecting primary data, the book here has three options. It says questionnaire, focus group, and interviews. So I'm just going to quickly go over what they have as some benefits and negatives of those three subheadings. The first one we have here is questionnaire and it allows for a large amount of data to be captured very quickly and by a very large audience. I think that's very obvious. We could have a whole um, auditorium full of people, give them a questionnaire to fill in and we'll get hundreds, possibly thousands of um, answers back. We also have the data being consistent. People have to stick to the same type of answers. That's both a benefit and a drawback. And so because of the, the data is consistent, it's very easy to then sieve through or go through the data or analyze the data. As I said, that's also a downside. Because the data is so consistent, these are closed questions. So people choose the answer that's closest to what they want and not, in, in many cases, not actually what they want to say. Questionnaires are very boring. So many times companies will have very low response rates because it's always an option for people to fill in a questionnaire. If it's not something that's forced upon you, because it's so boring and because it doesn't benefit you, the customer, in any direct way immediately, most people tend to skip it. Next, we have interviews. Now, this is normally done face-to-face. -face. However, it can be done over the phone or online. And it is typically a one-to-one -one meeting where one person speaks to another person. It does allow for follow-up questions. Personal contact can elicit greater honesty, which this simply means when you're sitting in front of someone, you can... Um, detect when they're lying you can prod for more questions rather than simply accepting what they've said like you would do on a questionnaire interviews take a lot of time and the data is less quantitative and more qualitative so you get very good quality of data because you're speaking to a person one-on-one -on -one. but in some cases it's more important to have quantity so we can determine what best suits let's say a hundred thousand people Next, we have focus groups. And as it states, it's a group of people who have been asked to come in and have a general conversation about whatever the topic is. 
benefits uh, it's quicker to gather information because we have so many people people tend to react to each other so you get a somewhat genuine answer and at times makes it a lot more detailed because one person might say one thing and then someone expands on that and the next person expands on it so on and so forth disadvantages uh, getting so many people together at the same time who want to speak about the same thing is going to be somewhat tricky unless it's done online no, a lot of stuff like this is being moved to online services like Skype or um, LinkedIn or Facebook video calls, stuff like that, WhatsApp video calls, because it makes it a lot easier. And similar to interviews, you mainly get qualitative data, which is harder to analyze. It's much easier to analyze quantitative data. So a, loads, a large quantity is easier to analyze because people tend to stick to similar answers or with, for example, a questionnaire they can only choose from answers one to five so you'll get a better idea of how many people like answer one versus two three four and five whereas with quality um, qualitative data you have to read every single thing because the person might write a very long sentence or the fact that they even write a sentence that sentence that they write might be vastly different from someone else's sentence no two people are going to have the same sentence so you have to sift through all the data to see maybe some people are um, leaning more towards being negative some are leaning more towards being positive so yeah qualitative data is harder to analyze quantitative data is easier to analyze you do need both of them depending on your situation one is not better than the other okay so it depends on the situation